When have you laughed hardest on the set of a Marvel movie? Hmm, that's a good question. What the hell is this made out of? Vibranium? <laughs> Probably with Scarlet, actually. Huh? Assemble! You know, it's not like either one, of, either one of us are necessarily jokesters, but we have a very similar sense of humor and we've known each other for a really long time. And sometimes you get those little giggle fits where you just, it's, it's, it's knowing that you're not supposed to laugh and you can't help but laugh. Uh, so yeah, probably with her. <laughs> Stop it! Where is it? I didn't do this to you. Nope. Go. Where is it? <laughs> That's going on the outtakes. Obviously the shield is a big part of everything. Mm -hmm. And just everything in life. It's just a big part of everything. In the world. In the world. <laughs> and it's a big part of the gag reels. <laughs> what gags can we look forward to in this particular Civil War? You got Anthony Mackie on set, so there's gonna be laughs. Soft sticks, please. Oh, look at you. You have a ponytail for a reason. But you also got Paul Bettany. And you got Paul Rudd. And these are really, really funny individuals, so I, I bet I bet this is going to be a good one. Thanks. Come on, man. I'll see How did you first get the role of Captain America? By luck. Uh, you know, it, it was something that I, I they, they were interested in me auditioning, and I was a little apprehensive and. It's kind of strange, the, the more I kind of resisted, the more they kind of pursued and, and eventually they offered it. And it, it, took a, it took a little bit of soul searching and, and talking to a few people because I, I was a little tentative. Uh, but then I ended up going for it and it honestly was the best decision of my life. How'd you feel? <sighs> I told her. And you initially turned it down, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I don't know if I can do this. You thought about it and you were ready for it. Thought about it and just felt, you know, this isn't the way I want to do this. It was a big contract. It was a six picture thing. And I, I really like, I just like making movies one at a time. You know, if, if at any moment you don't respond well, or, or if any moment you want to shift focus, you're afforded that opportunity. And the problem with a contract like that is if, if you have those hesitations or, or reinvented uh, desires. Nice boots, Tinkerbell. You, you can't pursue them because you got to go back into the suit. And that, that was scary. This isn't about me. Right. Because you got nothing to prove. Because obviously this wasn't the first time you played a superhero. So you've kind of already done it a bit. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Now picture that. But everywhere. I had done it, you know, six years prior or something like that. So, yeah. What do you think is behind Cap's enduring appeal? Because he's been around for a long time. Yeah. You know, I think he has a kind of um, austerity and a kind of binary approach to the world that I think is something we all kind of aspire to in the sense that it's, he knows what's right, he knows what's wrong, and that's it, and he believes it. The Avengers were formed to make the world a safer place. I feel we've done that. It's a very clean approach, and I think he has this kind of intrinsic leadership quality that you, people are gravitate towards. It kind of breeds allegiance. Also, he looks great in Stars and he and looks Stripes. great in red, white, and blue. Come on, he looks great. What's been your favorite incarnation of the outfit so far? Uh, stealth suit, without question. The the the, the, the suit in uh, Cap Two in the Winter Soldier, the opening sequence where it's, it's an all navy number. That thing was great. What about the nurse that lives across the hall from you? She seems kind of nice. Secure the engine room, then find me a date. I'm multitasking. But, uh, you know, I, I keep trying to bring it back. I'm going to try and bring it back for the Infinity Wars. But they, you know, Marvel really liked the red, you know, a little more of a purist in, in the approach to the capsule. <sighs> Looking back earlier on in your career, what would you say is your big break? Hmm. I mean, I, I had done two or three movies before I did Fantastic Four, um, and they were, you know, I, it was, I, you know, I did a movie called Cellular with Kim Basinger and uh, William H. Macy, and it was, you know, I felt like, oh, I'm a lead in a movie with you know, actual movie stars. Hello. 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 Hello, thank God. Who is this, Chloe? My name is Jessica Martin. 
I need your help. I've been kidnapped. Uh, I need you to go to the police. That was great, but I, I don't know that that was, I think maybe Fantastic Four, just because it was, it was one of the first movies that had more of a global awareness. Don't even think about it. Never do. And by this point, people have stopped saying to you, flame on in the street. And yeah. now it's, bye yeah. bye, Captain? What is. Yeah, yeah. They, they're, they're all saying Team Cap now. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Now, is there a particular film in your back catalogue for casual Marvel fans that you'd like to kind of flag up that they should go and check out? Well, yeah, I did a movie called Puncture a few years back in uh, 2010 that I really, really, really liked. Paul, he listen. agreed. This, we would drop this. Case. I agreed to taking on another firm. I never agreed to drop anything. I've called 15 other firms and no one will touch it. Well, I'm not dropping the case. It was great. You, you know, it's a true story about a very gifted lawyer who's also a drug addict who took on um, certain uh, hospitals that were uh, using um, non-disposable needles. And it's a really great story and it was a great character and I, I really loved the movie, but it was a really small film, so not a lot of people saw it. Can I ask why you're standing outside? They closed the station. You planning on standing out here all night? My purse was stolen. Back in 2014, you made your directorial debut, Before We Go. Do you have any plans to pick up the megaphone again? Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah, it's a matter of trying to find the right project. You know, it, doing the, the first movie was, to be honest, you know, not a lot of, not a lot of people are dying to let a kid who's never directed direct a movie. So, so the first time out really was just a matter of, someone was willing to take a risk. Thank you. Wow, you're actually good. <laughs> so the second time out, there has to be a, a far more. Um, rigorous process and picking the right project and, 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 and doing it the right way, you know. How has directing a movie changed the way you act? It's very eye-opening. It's, uh, it's very tricky to, to be in an editing room and see all your little handicaps and, you know, mistakes and bad habits and it's tough. It's tough to process, but like I said, it was a very educational and I tried to bring some of the, the, the new approaches to this film um, and, and, and I'm excited to, to direct again for, for that exact reason, that you kind of have a better sense of how you operate as an actor, not just as a director. But I guess I gotta be grown up. I gotta be okay with not being okay, which completely sucks. Do you have any advice for young actors looking to get to where you are today? Sure, well, what advice are they looking for? I mean, it's, it's some, some actors just want to know how to get into the business, you know, and uh, that, that's, that's, that's a trickier one to navigate. In terms of um, advice on the profession, um, don't, make sure you watch cinema. No movies, no films. The, the, the best thing you can do is have a really extensive knowledge of the field you're in. You know, don't just watch the new movies that are out, watch old movies, really understand old directors, old scripts, old actors, you know, just just know the history. And perseverance as well? Well, sure, I think that's pretty applicable in any, you know, competitive endeavor. You got, I mean, that, that's, again, th those types of things feel a little more disposable to me, you know, stay strong, don't listen to your heart. That's the crap that, you know, listen, every business that's competitive, you need those things. But if you're gonna specifically, you know, dedicate yourself to film, no film. Take the time to know movies. Don't be in a meeting where someone says to you, oh, what do you think about this? And you say, oh, I don't, I never saw one flew over the cuckoo's nest. You know, get out of here then. But I tried, didn't I? God damn it. At least I did that. Now, what do you want from Cap in the future? How would you like to see him grow? I, I just like any time they give him conflict. You know, he's, like I said, he's, he's got this kind of very clean, clear view of the world. And I think that can come across at times as, not vanilla, but but just just being stern and having convictions isn't dynamic enough on on screen. We have orders. We should follow them. Following is not really much, though. No, if you just have that approach, you're just kind of like your friend's scary dad. So you got detention, and you're just like he's. He, he really has a presence, but like I don't know anything about him. Um, and, and I think the best thing about Cap is when you see him affected by things, when you see him emote, when you see him concerned and, and, and unsure. And you think all's forgiven? I'm not looking for forgiveness, and I'm way past asking permission. So moving forward, as long as we can make him kind of human and, and make him 
um, not always so strict and, and, and confident. This is the fight of our lives, and we're gonna win. Whatever it takes. Good luck. He's pretty good, that. Right? Thank you so much, sir. You got it. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, man. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.